Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield, America's most popular two-way cigarette. What a pair. Chesterfield king size at the new low price and Chesterfield regular. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers. And that's with a U.S. Marshal. And the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke. Transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The first man they look for and the last one they want to meet. It's a chancy job that makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Gun smoke, young man with a gun. Mr. Dillon! Mr. Dillon! You headed for the depot, sir? No, I'm not, Chester. I'm looking for a cup of coffee. Thought I'd go over to Delmonico's here. You want to join me? Well, sir, I'd like to, but I better go down to the depot. What for? The mail. I never got there at noon. That's why I thought you was going now. I don't care about the mail, Chester. But come to think of it, you did start out at noon, didn't you? What happened? I got robbed. You got robbed? Yes, sir. Over at Alafraganza. Oh, you've been gambling all afternoon. Not all afternoon, Mr. Dillon. I watched the game for about an hour before I set in. Should have gone on watching it, Chester. You're right. Absolutely right. It cost me my last ten dollars. I thought sure I'd win this time. Why? Because it was my last ten dollars for the month. I had to... Well, that's about as good a reason for winning as any, I guess. It's just too much month for my pay, Mr. Dillon. Anyway, I might have won if I hadn't got cheated. Crooked game. The fella dealing was crooked, I know he was. But I sure didn't want to start no argument with him. No, sir, not him. Why? Who was he? I don't know. Some stranger calls himself Sam Kirchner. What? Sam Kirchner. Do you know him? I heard of him. Who is he? He's a gunman, Chester. Oh, I recognize that. That's why I didn't make no fuss about his crooked dealing. He was smart. Kirchner's the kind of man who enjoys killing. He's got a reputation for it out in the Arizonas. What's he doing here, I wonder? I don't know, Chester, but let's go find out. That's him, Mr. Dillon. Just getting up from the table over there. I guess the game is finished. Funny he didn't tell you his name, Chester. A man like that usually doesn't talk so much. No, sir, but I didn't think nothing about it at the time. He's coming over here to the bar, Mr. Dillon. Yeah? Glass of whiskey, bartender. Hello, Krishner. Where you been, Dylan? What? Took you long enough to get here. It's been a half an hour since I cheated your friend out of his money. Cheated me? You see, I told you he did. How'd you know I was a friend of Mr. Dylan's? I asked. Smart of me, wasn't it? What'd you ask for? What difference does it make? Never mind, Chester. What are you doing in Dodge, Kirchner? I got tired of Arizona. Why? Nobody there worth bothering about there. You mean there's nobody left worth your killing, is that it? A man can get rusty facing down bums and greenhorns, Dylan. What's the matter with Tombstone? Wyatt Earp wrote me it's a lively town these days. There's too many of them Earps. And they got Doc Holliday with them. Ah, a man would be a fool to ride into that camp. Well, you draw a line somewhere, don't you, Kirchner? One man at a time is good enough for me, Dylan. And I ain't greedy. You're kind of greedy about money. What do you mean? You admit it. Cheating Chester out of his ten dollars. I had a reason for that, Dylan. Did you? Yeah. He was hanging around watching the game. I found out who he was, so when he sat down, I took him. I can deal faster than that, but I wanted him to know and tell you about it. Why? 
I wanted to meet you, Dylan. I always like to get to know the leading citizens of the place. Got your own way of going about it. You objected? Well, narrowly, I object to cheating at cars, yeah. Well, you, I don't think it matters much. What are you doing in Dodge, Kirchner? I was nearby, up in Colorado. I heard you were there, Dylan. You've got quite a reputation. I'm a lawman, Kirchner, not a gunman. I don't care about my reputation. I do, yeah? You came here to kill me, huh? That's what I came for, Dylan. Kirchner, I'll tell you something. What? Men like you are useless as wolves. I hate every one of you kind. Then that'll make it easier for you to fight me, Dylan. I'll get you out in the plaza. Sundown tomorrow. What a pair! What a buy! We're talking about King Size Chesterfield at the new low price. And Chesterfield Regular. They're quality twins, the best cigarette ever made. Either way, you're like them with the same highest quality, same low nicotine, and that wonderful taste and mildness. A refreshing smoke every time. So change to Chesterfield, America's most popular two-way cigarette. Buy a carton today. You'll get the highest quality with King Size Chesterfield at the new low price. You get the highest quality with Chesterfield Regular. What a pair they are. They satisfy millions. They're the best for you. Mr. Dillon, sundown all day long. I feel terrible about this. Why? It isn't your trouble. I know, but if I hadn't sat in that game yesterday, things might have been different. Sam Kircher found me soon enough. That's what he said he came here for. I heard him, but I still feel guilty. What's the matter, Chessie? You afraid he'll kill me? Is he really that good? He beat a lot of men. You're going to fight him, ain't you? That's the worst part of this job, Chester. Having men like Sam Kirshner come looking around for another notch on his gun. There's nothing I can do about it. You don't have to fight him, Mr. Dillon. No, I don't. I could avoid it. How? Run away. Oh, Mr. Dillon, the plaza's plumb deserted. Sure. I guess the word's got around, Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what? He's coming! It's Sam Kirchner! He's walking across the plaza! Well, it must be sundown. Yes, sir. It is. Don't come out of the door, Chester, or you'll be behind me. I'm only going as far as the boardwalk. I won't. I'll stay right here, but if anything happens, I'm coming out. By golly! Don't be a fool. Come on out in the street, Dylan. What are you standing there for? What's the matter with you? You scared? Why don't you come down here, Dylan? There's lots of people here out watching us. It's been a long time since a marshal was killed in Dodge. I don't want to hear your talk, Kirchner. Let's get this over with. You did it, Mr. Dylan. Why, he hardly didn't have his gun out before you hit him the first time. I was watching him. I didn't wait for him. I drew first. You did? Giving a man a chance to be arrested is one thing. Shooting down a killer is another. Yes, sir. And this is nothing but a slaughter. A brainless slaughter. And like I said, it's the worst part of this miserable job. I guess it helped ridding the country of a man like Sam Kirchner. Shooting him down, killing him. But the trouble was, it made you feel like a part of his own senselessness when you did it. And everybody congratulating you afterwards and looking up to you didn't help any. That's one thing that got men like Kirchner started off wrong in the first place. All the talk, all the admiration for gunfighters, like the kid I met at the Texas Trail. One night, a couple months later, he was sitting with Miss Kitty when I came in. Evening, Matt. Sit down. Thanks, Kitty. This is Marshall Dillon, Pete. I know, I know, I see him. Pete, huh? Never saw you around here before, Pete. He rode in yesterday, Matt. It's his first time. Good thing, too. He's only 16. That young. Especially for a town like Dodge. Where are you from, Pate? On west of here. Cowboy? I was. That's what I've been arguing about with him, Matt. He says he's screwed being a cowboy. 
That's so. Why? I got other things to do. Like what? I'm gonna buy me a gun, Marshal. Gun? Sure. I'm gonna learn how to use it, too. I mean, it's no good without a gun. Oh. Hey, you start carrying a gun and you get handy with it and you'll grow up to be a U.S. Marshal or something. Now, Kitty. I need it. I never saw a man start using a gun if he didn't have to go on using it the rest of his life, however long that is. Tell me, Pate, what gave you this idea? What's wrong with it? Everybody carries a gun. Of course, everybody can't use them real good, but I'll learn. I'll get good. As good as you are, Marshal. Oh. Sure. Maybe even better. Who knows? That's what I mean. It all leads to nothing but getting killed. Who cares about how good you are with a gun? There's always somebody better. She's right, Pate. Now don't you forget about this and find yourself a job in the country somewhere and go to work. I'm going to have to, Marshal. I'm plumb broke right now. Good. That's fine. You know anybody around here? No. Well, look, I'll tell you. Emmett Bowers is due in town tomorrow. He runs a big outfit and he can always use an extra hand. You meet me at the lobby of the Dodge House tomorrow morning, Pate. Well, we'll have a talk with him. Okay. Uh, I'd better be going now. I gotta find me a place to sleep. Here's a dollar, Pate. You can pay me back later. No, no, I couldn't take it. No thanks. Good night. Good night, Kitty. So long, Pate. Good night. He's got a lot of pride, that kid. Yeah, but it's mostly the wrong kind, Kitty. Maybe. But he'll forget about this gunfighting business once he's back out in the country where he belongs. I hope so. There's enough gunmen around already. Oh, Pate's all right. Don't worry about him. I won't, Kitty, unless he comes back someday. Pate was at the Dodge House the next morning, and we found Emmett Bowers there and got him a job right off. They rode out of town together that evening, and I watched them go, hoping that a lot of hard work would give Pate something to think about besides becoming a gunfighter. Anyway, I'd done what I could and I forgot about it, until a couple of months later when I just happened to go into Jonas's general store. Morning, Marshal Dillon. Hello, Mrs. Jonas. How come you're running the store? Why, haven't you heard, Marshal? No, heard what? My husband's got the yard real bad. I've been taking care of him and running the store, too. Sorry to hear that, ma'am. How do you manage to do both? I moved his bed into the storeroom out back. Matter of fact, Doc Adams is there with him now. Oh, that poor man, Marshall. He had the chills one day and the fever the next for nigh on to a week. Well, Doc will fix him. He can cure most anything. Yeah, I can cure most anything but a liar, Matt. Hello, Doc. I didn't know you were listening. Yeah, I was listening. I heard what you said and it was a long <laughs> way from what you told me the other day. Why, what do you mean, Doc? Mrs. Jones, she told me that the only thing croakers were good for was performing autopsies and signing death certificates. That's exactly what he said. Death certificates? Oh, dear. Don't let him scare you, ma'am. No one ever died of the argo yet. Doctor or no doctor? Matt, why aren't you out patrolling Front Street or keeping the peace somewhere like you're paid to do? A man can't work all the time, Doc. Oh, you can, huh? Well, I'll remember that the next time you come hounding me out of bed in the middle of the night to patch up some bad men you just torn apart. Well, when you're through here, I'll buy you a glass of beer, Doc. It's awful hot today. I don't mind the heat, but I'll take you up on it all the same. Say, Mrs. Jonas, if your husband complains about his ears roaring, it's the quinine I gave him, so don't worry about it. Well, thanks for coming over, Doc. I'll be back again tomorrow. Hello, Marshal. Well, hello, Pate. How are you? Oh, I'm okay. Pate, you know uh, Mrs. Jonas here? Ma'am? Hello, Pate. And Doc Adams? How do you do? Doc? Pate's been riding for Emmett Bowers the last couple of months. Oh, that's fine. Emmett's a good boss, I've always heard. Yeah, he's all right. They treating you okay out there, Pate? It's like any other job punching cows, Marshal. Short grub and long hours. Yeah, sure. What are you doing in town? Come in with Emmett. 
No, I come in alone. Oh, you didn't quit, did you? I quit. I drew my time last night. I was afraid so. Ma'am, I want to get me a six gun and a holster and a belt and all the ammunition. The rest of my money will buy. Now, oh, son, ain't you a little young to be carrying a gun? I'm 16. And if I'm old enough to do a man's work, I guess I'm old enough to live like a man. Live like a man, huh? You mean die like one, don't you, young fella? I ain't afraid to die. Well, I don't know. I've dug bullets out of all kinds of men, young, old, and don't matter how they talk, every one of them's been afraid. I get it good enough. I'll do the killing. And if I've been given a decent chance... Hey, tell me something. How'd you get started on all this in the first place? I don't mind telling you, Marshal, now. Now? Now that I got money for a gun and I can start practicing. Wait a minute. Is there some particular man you're after, Paid? Is that it? Yeah, that's it, Marshal. Well, who is he? You. Me. I'm going to fight you, Marshal, and I'm going to kill you if I can. Well, why? I never saw you before in my life until you came here. Paid's my first name, Marshal. So? My last name is Kirchner. I heard about how you shot my brother, so I come here to take his place. Hey, Sam Kirchner was nothing but a killer. He was no good. You drew on him first. What difference does that make? Your brother came after me for only one reason. To kill me so he could be a big man. You think I'm going to take a chance on being killed for anything as brainless as that? There are rules to gunfight, Marshal. He wasn't ready to draw. Where'd you get all those crazy ideas, kid? Who taught you that killing is a game of some sort? My brother told me all about it a long time ago. Sure, for him it was a game. That's what was wrong with him, Pate. He'd have beaten you if he'd been ready. Do you wait for a mad dog to bite you before you try and stop him? Your brother was ready. He rode into Dodge, ready. Well, I'll be ready for you in a few weeks, I will. You will, huh? Look, Pate, I've been handling a gun for years. What makes you think you can go against me in just a few weeks, unless you're planning on something else? No, Marshal. I'll never shoot nobody in the back, not even you. You're not that bad, Pate, but you sure got everything mixed up. Why, because I'm 16? You'll see what I can do, Marshal. And what if I won't draw on you? I'll kill you anyway. Like you say, what difference does it make? All right, if you're going to act like your brother, I'll treat you like your brother. And when you come gunning for me, I'll shoot you down as fast as I did him. So go ahead and practice. Practice all you like. But when you face me, I'll have three bullets in you before you even clear your holster. I don't care how old you are. Your best cigarette today is Chesterfield. This Chesterfield king size at the new low price, and for your convenience, Chesterfield regular. What a pair. Either way, you get the taste, the mildness you want, a refreshing smoke every time. Either way, you get the highest quality, low nicotine. Buy a carton of Chesterfields, they're the best for you. If I thought getting mad would scare some sense into Pate Kirchner, I was wrong. He went ahead and bought his six gun, and every day he spent hours down by the Arkansas practicing with it. In a few years, that kind of concentration might have made him into a fair gunfighter. But as it turned out, he didn't get a few years. He didn't get more than about ten days. And those ten days got spent fast. One evening, I was sitting out on the porch not far from the Texas Trail, watching the crowd push up and down Front Street. Matt! Matt! Hello, kitty. Matt, Chester's in the trail there, and he asked me to come find you. What's the trouble? You know Jack running? I know him. Well, he's at the bar, and he's making fun of young Pate. Chester isn't sure how much Pate's going to take from him. Running's more than just a bully, kitty. He's dangerous. Chester tried to make him stop, but it didn't do any good, Matt. I hope Pate isn't fool enough to try and take him. Running will kill him for sure if he does. I tried to tell him that he shouldn't be wearing a gun. But you know, Pate, he won't listen to anybody. Well, you better wait out here. I aim to. Leave the kid alone, Ronnie. He ain't bothering you none. Get out of my way, Chester. Everybody else out the way, too. 
I'm giving you one more chance, Pete, to throw that gun of yours away, or you start using it. Go ahead, draw running. I ain't afraid of you. Okay, I will. No, no, don't do it running, no. Shut up, everybody, shut up. My hand, my hand, you busted my hand, Marcel. Why'd you do that for? This ain't your fight. It's like shooting a man in the back. You ruined my hand. You're about to murder this boy running. I should have shot you in the head. Go on over to Doc's if your hand bothers you. Bothers me? It's smashed. Good. I wonder how many lives that's going to save. Now go on. Get out of here. I'm going. I'm going. You've ruined me. See what you've done? We'll see about this. He'd have killed him for sure, Mr. Dillon. Paint? Paint never even got his gun out. That's true, I didn't. I kind of froze and I don't know why. Paint? Jack Running's the same kind of man your brother was. Always looking to kill somebody. And if you still think it's a game of some kind, go on wearing that gun. When the time comes, I'll see you buried with it. But that's all I'll do for you. Come on, Chester, let's get out of here. Yes, sir. Marshal! Marshal! Wait a minute! Marshal! Yeah? He saved my life just now. He sure did. One more second and you would have had that bullet clean through you. I know that, but I don't understand. What don't you understand? You could have let him kill me and I wouldn't have been after you no more, would I? Not dead, you wouldn't. But you saved the life of a man who sworn to kill you, Marshal. Yeah, that's right. Well, why'd you do it? Because you didn't have a chance with him, Pate. Not a chance. I'm kind of confused, Marshal. You are? I sure am. Well, it's, it's about time. Maybe you'll figure it out now, Pate, if you give yourself half a chance. Marshal, I can always think better when I'm riding a horse. I'm going back to my job. Good. I'm glad to hear that, Pate. Would you do me a favor? Sure. Well, punching cows keeps me busy so I won't have time to practice much. Would you hold on to my gun for me? Here. Sure I will, Pate. Sure I will. I'll keep it for you for a long time, I hope. L and M goes king size. Yes, L and M goes king size. Now L and M king size as well as regular. Both have the same low price. Both have the miracle tip for effective filtration you'll need. Yes, it's the filter that counts, and L&M has the best. You'll get much more flavor, less nicotine. A light and mild smoke. Yes, this is it, L&M filters. Just what the doctor ordered. Buy a carton, king size or regular. Both at the same low price. L&M filters, America's highest quality and best filter tip cigarette. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specifically written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in this cast were Sam Edwards, Lawrence Dobkin, Vivi Janis, and John Daner. Parley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out to the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Remember next week at the same time, Chesterfield will bring you another transcribed story of the Western frontier on Gunsmoke. This is the CBS Radio Network.